guess I guess what I would ask you then is like what what do you think NA's biggest problems are because you've been playing here for a long time. Um, obviously, the results haven't matched up. I mean, there were some years where you could say that we were we were better than what the results showed, but in general, there hasn't oh, been course. yeah there hasn't been that much success from NA. So like how do you, like where do you really align? Because there's a million excuses that people have, right? It's people are getting paid too much. It's the fucking ping. It's the fact that we have too many imports and like people can't speak the same language. So more Q is a million angles. Yeah, isn't yeah, there? yeah. There's a million angles. So, so where do you really like fall down on the issues within North America? Uh, I mean, to me, it's always I kind of viewed it as just people don't like to practice as much, and I feel like me and my teams when we really looked the strongest is when we've had the most practice and people were dedicating the most amount of their time to the game. Is there and a secret to making that environment? And like, if I gave you a billion dollars tomorrow and your only goal is like make any as a region better, right? Assuming we don't use the billion to buy the shy and we're actually trying to make the region better. What would you change in the environment to make it like better practice or better quality practice or more often it works out? What would you change? I mean, I would start by just importing a thousand European players or a thousand Chinese players to just come <laughs> here and play the solo queue. Because that was actually what I really said on a talk show. People think I was joking. I actually meant it. If all these orgs have the money they do, some of these guys, by the way, are tiny little streamers or like guys in solo queue in Korea or Europe. Like they'd come over if you paid them to be in your streaming house or whatever, and it would make the quality of your solo queue better. Definitely, because right now, if I'm trying to try hard in solo queue, I have to wait 20 minutes for each game. And even then, the quality is like, not secure to be that high quality and yeah i mean there's just not enough players here to really that's why we see a lot of people just smurfing and they're not even trying to get like rank one because the queue times are just way too long if you're even trying to like climb and there's just not enough players to actually support like the high-end solo queue yeah oh um, is this something that, that like you yourself have kind of just like like because I, I know I know you used to always be at the top of the ladder, right? I mean, I think you're 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 pretty high up there now. But for like a lot of the split, it felt like you were just kind of like, like going through the motions, like playing the game. But like you just kind of like it felt like you were kind of beaten down by the fact that solo queue was so bad here. Did it eventually like affect you, and you just kind of viewed it as not good practice because you were somebody that was always top five or like top ten, and you'd always make like push us for rank one, either hit rank one or get really really fucking close. And then this year, you know, um, you know, I was I was playing against you a decent amount, so. <laughs> You know, like, where, where did you really fall down on solo queue? Like, did you take it less seriously this year because of, like, all the queue times uh, and everything? I mean, in Spring Split, I hit, like, 1k LP, and then I decayed in the offseason, and right now I'm 1.1k 1, 1. LP as well, so, like, I feel like I can always hit top ranks in solo queue if I want to, if I'm tryharding, but a lot of times it's just really it's not worth it. If I'm trying to learn new champions, I don't want to spend 20 minutes in queue to play a game of Lilia where I'm just gonna run where, it down. Where, like yeah I'm kind of gonna run it down you know so like I'd rather just spend like one minute in queue and I can get in five games of Lilia at the time I can get in two games and like challenge you know so yeah. I mean it's just minimaxing I guess sometimes the games in high yellow is just really tragic because you get people on off roll and then whoever has more on roll people just win and yeah I mean, it just kind of sucks yeah <laughs> Sounds good to me. Do you have a take on this, Thorin? Because I got another topic, but I just wanted to know. It's like it's a, like you to me, to me, it's not even, I'm not even like trolling when I say that. The premise would be this, is like the whole point of franchising is, again, as a region, we want to be one of the better regions. We want to be profitable. We want to have like increased viewership. So what I would do is if all these teams, there's 10 teams, they all collectively got together and said, right, we're all going to recruit three streamers or who are like high ELO from any other region. It could be from Europe or China, Korea, whatever. They just have to be willing to come to America, eligible for the visa, and they'll come. I'll put them in a streaming house. They produce content, which obviously I'll market on my side channel and I'll make money from that you know whatever angle you're going to take but the idea is the implied value of the move is now all of a sudden if we all take three and stuff that's 30 extra players who are going to play solo queue all day long and all they do remember is play solo queue they're not trying out from our team i mean you can do that if you want if they turn out to be good but this is just literally collectively we'd make basically a class of talent to make solo queue better because if people don't know this is kind of actually what happened in the game overwatch so in Overwatch, unsurprisingly, Korea became the best. They had the best solo queue and all the, all the same shit. But because the Overwatch 
Overwatch League is like LCS, but if all the regions were in one, all the best Koreans came over to America, lived in America, and were playing Overwatch. So when they would then play on the ladder after their scrims, it meant it was like being on the Korean ladder almost. It wasn't quite, but it was close enough. Like you would have so many players there, you could get quality practice. And so like I have always thought there's got to be some creative solution to improving that angle because even though everyone makes it sound like, but it's just solo queue, it's like, no, that's like the lifeblood of the extra time you're going to put into the game. You're already going to scrim anyway. But if, if you imagine a Michael Jordan type character who puts in the extra hours in NA, what's he putting those hours into? Like it's a waste of time, as he as Sven Skeren says. It's it sounds cool if like the rookie or the shy is sat there and they play like five extra solo queue games in Korean solo queue. It's not cool if they sat there for 20 minutes, they load into a game and their AD carry was an auto-filled like one trick from jungle and they've lost the game already. Like, like even the rookie would if rookie would throw the fucking PC out the window if that happened. Like these guys don't tolerate that shit. Like I, I can totally understand why people like um Jensen spot the best example ever that guy just mails in solo queue like every fucking split now like i don't i wasn't it years since he's cared because you know what he comes into the real lcs games it doesn't matter it hasn't affected his level at all that's a really bad sign if someone who in theory used to love fucking practicing league of legends doesn't even want to play it for fun outside of his job like that's, that's a really bad sign for me with the environment mm -hmm. what do you think Tom? would it work i mean I, th I think it would definitely add value like i don't think it could hurt <laughs> like so <laughs> i mean that that's where i'm at um, I think that also just like a lot of the fundamental changes that Riot has done to the game have kind of hurt NA even more than other regions. Like when they increased the EQ times that you get at high low, like I, I know even in low challenger, um, you're getting like 25 minute queues sometimes, which is just absolutely unacceptable, right? Like how are you supposed to even do anything with it? And then people will complain about, oh, why don't streamers play high elo? Like, oh, streamers are just like ruining solo queue because all they do is smurf. It's like, yeah, because you can't find a fucking game. Like, it's not even profitable to stream in this region anymore. I tried actually doing something where I I co-streamed LCS earlier this split, and then I would try to snipe pro players after the games, like when they were in solo queue, I would play on a challenge account and and, and snipe players. I actually ran into, that was when I was running into Sven Skarin, actually, um, a decent amount, but the the game quality, it just take too long. You lose all your fucking viewers, and it's like, okay, no one's going to wait for 25 minutes in between a game. Imagine you yeah. start with 10K viewers, and three games in, you're at like 3K. Or like 2K. And it happens to like every streamer. I mean, you watch TF Blade, he smurfs and piss low. Like, oh man, like I'm doing my 75th uh, unranked challenger with 97% win rate plus. Like restart if I lose a single game. He does like his own thing, right? Okay. And he's at 15K viewers the entire time. Right now he's like, all right, no mic, no cam. Try hard to rank one. Currently like rank like 35 right now. He's just fucking sitting in queue. You hear the music. Everyone in chat is like fucking flaming him. Like, dude, you're so washed up. You used to be rank one, man. Like, now you can't even fucking win at rank 98. Like, you're never going to be good again. All this type of shit. And then he's getting 4K viewers. So what the fuck is the trade-off? Like, no one wants to actually play when, when the system is like this. Honestly, like, I think it made sense because there were low-quality, high-low games. But my perception is that shit was better. I liked playing with shorter queues and actually being able to find games compared to whatever this shit is now. This shit isn't worth playing in, in North America. And, yeah, they are able to add more people... Or, like, there was more added value or anything, man. Like, they could make solo queue worth more. Like, if people tried more when they actually had the, the like, backpacks and stuff like that. Like, when they, when there was Challenger backpacks, Challenger jackets, like, those little, like, physical incentives... You think it's a joke, but I honestly well, I know, know. Listen, I know that there are, listen, I could totally tell that some people would try hard. Like if you're just a solo queue player, yeah, it'd be cool to get that. It's just to me, that really showed where Riot's head is at. What did they come up with as their ultimate reward? Something that like a little nine-year-old American kid would want who's from like California. Like, oh dad, cool, I got the new jacket and the fucking the trainers with the lights in them. Like, what are the fucking adults? Like what are, what are the where are the rewards for actual adults? What do you get? I mean, I, I noticed an just increase in solo queue when those Backpack. things happened. If they did it like every split or they had some incentive or there was like, you know, more like uh, even even sure. now, right? Like the, the scouting grounds is kind of like structured weird where people don't really view it as a, as a real path to pro um, getting high rated in scouting grounds because now there's a team aspect. So it's like, why am I going to try hard in solo queue and I can just join a team? There's so many like different angles that I feel like the, the solo queue here is like really um, devolved. So it's I think definitely this a factor putting people off for sure. Yeah. Plus, I've heard when Bjergsen's backpack arrived, like all the TSM players, like immediately jumped in and went for it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. like, this is what we're supposed to go at, Bjergsen. He's like, not until the game starts. All right, that was the obvious it. one. Uh, come <laughs> on, man! Like, you really had to. I know. Whatever. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> no, no, uh, man. no, no. If I, if I if I can say something too, I think yeah. like um, the, one of the things like I dislike about the solo queue is that like okay, I wait twenty minutes to find a game and then some like. 
I think like eight out of ten of my games, I'm jungling against some guy that is either like low tier master or he's like first time in jungle, he's off roll, he's auto filled in jungle, or he's just like a one trick that's banned out, and like it just feels really useless for me because I'm not learning too much. But and then the two games where I'm against like uh, another LTS pro in jungle, like the game is just so much more competitive. I'm being challenged. I'm learning stuff from solo queue, but then. Just way too many of the games, I'm just against some guy that has no clue what he's doing and I mean, the practice just feels awful then. So, like the goal about moving people over that would actually like dedicate their life to just playing the solo queue would like make the region a lot better, I feel like. And also just uh, another point is like the ping is just really terrible. Like, I mean, people have memed this forever, but like I'm playing, I'm in LA and I'm playing 53 ping, which is like the best you can add, like the absolute best you can get and then i'm playing against other people from la who's playing on 70 ping and i'm just like 20 ping difference like people in korea play with eight ping so like we're playing like 10 times more ping than they have you know so yeah it's kind of a uh, kind of insane yeah yeah no i actually appreciate that you guys put me on that internet because i was one of those people playing on 74 ping and like apparently eg lives in it's the same so building. unplayable yeah, yeah eg lives in the same building so one of their managers actually hit me up they like saw me playing solo queue with 74 ping they're like you know you can get like 53 if you change this weird ass internet service which like okay it, it has its down that's legit though that they just actually volunteered that information that's cool of them. yeah no they they hit me up so i got a shout out eg on that one they actually <laughs> fixed play. my solo queue ping uh <laughs> went from 74 yeah. to 53 so i mean it's but it's just crazy that you can play against people on 8 ping and NA and I'm just feeling like there's nothing I could have done. He just has lower ping than me, so I, I just, I'm deemed to get outplayed.